Welcome to episode 5 of the Irish Home Show, your guide to Ireland's homes and property. Each week we are taking you through a different stage in the house buying process. We've covered savings and mortgages and finance. This week we're getting into the more exciting part, house hunting. In the upcoming explainer section, I'm going to be taking you through how to prepare yourself best for house hunting in the Irish market at the moment. I'll be running you through some questions that I get buyers to ask themselves about where they want to be, why they want to be there, how big a house they need, what aspects they need, and just to define exactly what they're looking for in a home. Then for my interview this week, I have a fabulous guest, a recent home buyer, Melanie Murphy. Melanie is a very well-known author and a vlogger, and she has recently acquired her own home and is in the process of doing it up. She's going to be talking to us about her process, the challenges they faced, how they identified and found the perfect home for her new family. Finally, at the end of the show, we have our features, in, out and away, and new home versus old home. And finally, I'll be wrapping up all the property news from this week. So join us for episode five of the Irish Home Show. So house hunting. For some people, this is the most enjoyable part in the house buying process. You get to search through the portals, click through the property porn, uh, look at potentially what you could afford. Uh, sometimes get carried away and think, well, what could I afford if I uh, won the lottery? Uh, but for others, it's also the most excruciating part of house buying, uh, especially in recent years when there has been uh, not enough stock on the market. You're searching through the same old ads and not finding anything that suits you or you see something you like and it's already gone sale agreed. It's incredibly frustrating. And some people find this period very fast and can be sale agreed with the first house they look at in two weeks and others might find it takes them one or even two years. Whatever camp you fall into, just be patient, keep an eye out and use our tips to help you find the best home for you. So let's get started. Here are my five essential tips for house hunting. Number one, where to look for property in Ireland. We really have two major property portals, daft.ie and myhome.ie. Both have their different pros and cons. Uh, most agents will use both my home and daft to list their properties like we do. But in some areas, one is maybe more common to be used than others. For example, daft is much more used by the local agents around the country uh, and in rural Ireland whereas my home is probably more predominant in the capital and some agents won't use Daft. So you kind of need to keep on top of both, which does double the effort. But both these portals are very good and they have excellent search functions, but also very good email alert systems. My recommendation is you set up an account with either my home or Daft or both. And when you set up an account, not only can you favorite uh, properties that you see that you like, but you can also pick search criteria where you can say, I am looking for any property in Terranur, Walkinstown, and Crumlin between the price ranges of 350 and 450,000 euros. And My Home and Daft will send you a latest alert whenever a new property is uploaded in that price range. They're pretty quick, to be honest. It can be almost instant, or at least within half an hour or so of the property going online. And I find for my properties that I'm selling, some of the most successful buyers, the ones who eventually get the house, are the ones who are the first to contact me the minute the sale goes up. That's because they've been clever and set up their alerts, so they are the first ones to be informed when a new property in their area or their price range comes on the market. However, that leads me to my second point. Don't be too focused on a particular range or area. Sometimes you can accidentally cap yourself out by putting in a price level that is just on exactly what your budget is. Remember, not everything goes for the asking price. Uh, sometimes things go higher, yes, but sometimes things go lower as well. So if you had exactly 400,000 to spend, put your price search in at 450, just in case there's something on there that comes in at 445 or even 425 uh, that might be available to get a little bit lower. Or perhaps you find it's the perfect property for you and look, you're willing to borrow some more money from someone, get some help uh, and try and just stretch that a little bit further because it gets you a better property. 
Also, geographically, do not narrow yourself down in too small an area. You might desperately want to be in Dublin 8, but you might find that prices in there are getting out of your reach and the choice of houses you're getting in there are too limited. By expanding your search area into some of the adjacent neighborhoods, you sometimes might find something you would have missed that could just be on the border of where you wanted to be, or something that's better, bigger, uh, better quality, uh, just by branching out a little bit more. In the last few years, when supply has been so low, people have had to reach out a lot further. And also, as prices have been very high, people have also found they are pushing themselves further and further out of the city or their target area. Now, that's okay for some. Sometimes you might decide, look, I'd rather be central and maybe have a smaller house or need to do more work to that house. But others are finding, look, actually, for the same price, I can get so much more better value for money by just going slightly out into the next borough, the next suburb, or even, even sort of half an hour down the road if I can manage the commute. That's why we have our in, out, and away section at the end of the show. Uh, tune into those and just see some of the options there. We compare a property at the same price range and see what you can get in the city, on the outskirts, on the suburbs, or out in the country. And it, it can surprise you sometimes. That pretty much sums up our third part, which is be open-minded. Look, you may want to be in a certain area or a certain type of house. Uh, some people come and say, oh, look, I wouldn't ever want a mid-terrace house. I want to have access to the side. Well, look, don't narrow your search and avoid those things. Sometimes a terrace house could be in a perfect location. It could be beautifully prepared inside. It could have a lovely back garden, and even maybe has a back entrance that you don't see from the initial photo. So don't limit yourself to certain criteria that might be important to you, but you, know, you, you could miss something that is out there. And similarly, if you were on the borderline of searching for an apartment or a house, look at both, look at duplexes. Uh, you might find something that actually suits you, even though it's not an independent house, you can find some really fantastic duplexes or even apartments that you weren't expecting uh, that could be just as good and affordable for you. Part four, talk to friends and family. I am always surprised how many people find homes through people they know, especially at the moment, when prices are high, there's a lot of homeowners out there who are actually trying to be quite sympathetic to first time buyers and would choose them over an investor or uh, another type of buyer. So tap who you know, get your friends, get your family to talk to their friends and family and see if anyone uh, knows of a house that's coming up for sale. You might get a chance to have a look at it off market and at least make a good offer uh, without them having to have the hassle of using an estate agent. Uh, they could just use a solicitor. It's just as good. Don't tell my colleagues that. Uh, and they could avoid that as well. Or there's always a steady supply of executor sales uh, where uh, someone has passed away and the family is selling it on. Often, certainly, if, if the kids are older and established in their own houses already, uh, they're not desperate for every penny out of the sale. They'll sometimes decide, look, I can sell this to a nice local family or a first time buyer and feel good about it going to another nice family moving into a home that we grew up in. And they will want to pass a sale on to someone they know. So talk to friends and family and see if anyone knows anyone who is going to be selling a house in the near future. Finally, be positive. You've come this far, you've done your savings, you've got your mortgage approval. They are huge milestones. The next one is finding a house. You may be searching day and night on the property portals. You may go to hundreds of viewings, but just know that your prince is out there. You may have to kiss a few frogs first. I've had so many people narrowly miss out on what they thought was a house of their dreams, only to find a house a couple of doors down the road has come on the market and they found that that's even better for them, perfect for their family. So look, your right house is out there. You just have to keep looking and fingers crossed, you'll find it. Finally, I'm going to give you a little homework this week. Uh, this is a couple of pages in our Irish Home Buyers Journal, but you could do it at home just on any piece of paper. We have a couple of pages here, which just allows people to do a little exercise of working out what their dream home would be or what they need. Uh, this one, your perfect property, gives a space where you can highlight what you need. Do you want a house, an apartment, a bungalow? Do you need two, three, four bedrooms? Do you need parking, a garage, storage, all those sort of things? Use that as just somewhere to write it down because you may have these ideas in your head, but you haven't put it on paper. It's worth putting it down almost to manifest it in some ways, but also then you can look and see, is that essential or do we really need it? Or can we just think of something else that we prefer? And finally, the next page was actually a suggestion by our upcoming guest. Uh, when she saw an early version of the journal, she said, I'd love a page like this. We put it in there, a needs versus wants page. What do you need in a property? Look, I need a roof over my head and I need, I have two kids, I need a certain number of bedrooms. And what do you actually want? Look, I want a hot tub and a four car garage, but do I need it? No, probably not. So I joke a bit, but 
go through and write down what do we need? What are the bare essentials? Where do we need to be close to? What space we need within the house? How many bedrooms do we need? How much garden do we need? What do we want? Well, we want it in perfect condition. No, you look, if you're handy, you can do some work. Do I need a walk-in wardrobe or is it only a want? It's a good exercise to sit down, especially if there's a couple of you and you haven't talked it out or put it on paper yet. It's worth going through and writing down your exact needs and wants. And so you can be laser focused on what you're looking for in a home. Coming up next in my interview with Melanie Murphy, we're going to talk about how she searched for a property, where she looked, the type of property she needed, and how she eventually found her dream home. So this week on the show, I have a fantastic guest. She was one of the early users of the Irish Home Buyers Journal. In fact, we sent her a prototype before we even launched the first edition. And I'm glad to say, you know, a year on, she's now a proud homeowner. Uh, this is Melanie Murphy, one of Ireland's leading original vloggers and now an author, two-time author as well. Melanie, how are you doing? Doing really good. Actually, now that you say that as well, I realize like I didn't get as much use out of the journal as I wished I had because I, I kind of thought it would go on a lot longer. I got so very lucky getting in there early. But the amount of people I'm after telling about that journey in my life, like family and friends and stuff like that, because it was just so, uh, I don't know, it gave me a bit of hope, I suppose, at the time. And it gave me a bit of structure and uh, and at least I knew where to start. I was just saying we were uh, you were chatting to us last year I think you were chatting to my friend Kieran at Crazy House Prices and yes. at the time I think you were just getting into the start of the house hunting and you were looking yeah. very nervous about it he was uh, recounting how long it can take some people and then yeah. look you know less than a year later you have or you know a few months after that you quickly quite quickly found a house uh, and you yes. got it and you're you're all in there and and refurbing it now so um, yes. you know, things can happen quite quickly once you get into the right position Absolutely and this is the thing as well I think the last time when I was starting that process of like looking for a house, that was actually my second kind of attempt at it, I suppose. And I think I, it sounds a lot more pressing because I had a child and we were living in with our in-laws and stuff like that. So it just felt a little bit more urgent, I suppose, to find somewhere. But I first went to try and buy a house when I was about, I think it was 27 or 28. Mm. And I had saved up for a deposit and... You know, when I looked at what I was paying in rent, I knew I could afford a mortgage. But yeah. when I went to try and get one, they were just not having it. They were like, firstly, because I was just on my own. Secondly, because I was self assigned So um, that was like a huge barrier for me at the time well, because of the type of work I do as well. They didn't understand this. Well, that was one of the first things I wanted to ask you, actually. Last week, I spoke with uh, Alan from Cloud Accounts about uh, self-employed people getting a mortgage. Uh, and it is, and, and also being a single person. It's Both of those things are a huge challenge. And, and mm. what, sort of, what stopped you at that time? What, how did they approach you as a self-employed person? So I, um, I, 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 I was actually with my husband at the time, but I wanted to buy a house myself. And I always kind of had that in my head from my early 20s that I would buy a house um, and my dad would live with me as well um, because I knew that he wouldn't be able to get a mortgage at his stage of life and stuff like that. Um, my dad has quite a, a bad disease as well. So like I just wanted him to be able to live with me. And um, when I went to them, I was really confident that I would be able to at least buy like, you know, a, a regular three bedroom house just be based on my, on my situation because, I, you know, I'd done everything. I'd hired the accountants, I'd gotten myself all sorted out for years, like sorted, sorted with tax, sorted with having consistent books, sorted with savings, like having a consistent amount of going into a savings account every month. So I thought, oh, this is, this is a no, like this will be grand. But they just, I suppose they were, um, they were really uncertain about the future, I suppose, future proof of my ability to earn money. And, you know, I've been doing it for, now I'm kind of self-employed for nine years, I suppose. And every year as I have been making more money because I've I've got more streams of income now than I used to just rely on, like say, I don't know, like YouTube brand deals or whatever. Um, but I've kind of expanded my work and stuff. And so I, I, and I have a degree as a backup and I just thought, you know, I'm never gonna just not work. Like I'll always know how to be keep the money coming in. But I they, can imagine, they I, I can, I'd like to imagine the look on the bank manager's face <laughs> when they had to sort of look at your employment details and your income details. And you know, it's bad enough for a self-employed person who's a you know, 
trained electrician or something like that, uh, which they yeah, and they understand as a, as a a vlogger and uh, sort of influencer deals and and perhaps a, some book income. They're probably a yeah. bit skeptical about uh, about your long term. Well, they had but yeah, and they they did. And um, no, that was one thing is that we did have to get a twenty five year mortgage because of my job. Um, though I'm kind of happy about it in a way that like at least I'll be in my fifties and I'll own. I will have a mortgage Absolutely. because I'd say that's so stressful. And a lot of people are going to end up in that situation where they're, they're, they're probably a few years away from retirement. They still have a lot of money to pay off. Of, yes, of mortgage I, I, was, I was explaining just this in a, a couple of episodes ago that most, most mortgages are, are linked to your age and really up to a cutoff of 65 when you're supposed to retire. Mm-hmm. So if you're, if you're 30 and you get a mortgage, then you can get a 35 year mortgage. But if you're getting a mortgage at 50, it's only going to be yeah. 15 years. And the, the, the now your repayments are going to be more for a 25-year mortgage than they would have been for a 35-year 35 35 mortgage. Year, yes. Exactly, as you say, you'll pay it off quicker. And you'll also yeah. you'll pay less in the, in the long run because you're not paying so many years of interest. Yes. So if oh, you can I know. It, then great. The interest thing actually blew my mind. And um, that was one thing that, you know, when they usually are offering you your mortgage options and the first one had like, you know, this chunk of money that you can get immediately. Like if you do this, then you get like, you know, X amount of thousands. Um, and my husband did the calculations and realized that to get, say, I can't remember if it was 5,000 or 10,000 with back. our cash back. Yeah. And it w- we would have paid back so much extra it to take more that. Than double. And, yeah. Oh, it was a lot more than double. It, it freaked me out. I was, I was like, because it, it sounds... um appealing you know because you want to furnish your house and you want to a lot of people probably need to do that but then it's it it really I don't know feels like it really takes advantage of people because then yeah that the repayments can be mad but like we're all in this mad position with interest rates and like it's just shocking the situation and, and then it, it, it yeah, we're, very scary now not just for people who already own a home but those who were you know in the, in the process of trying to buy something their mortgage rate boom. they thought they had agreed with the bank has just gone it's up you know, today in you know, a finance island have put up rates two percent on any new new oh. mortgages for first time buyers. It's, it's crazy. You know, that's another three hundred euros a month for someone. So it immediately makes everything less affordable. Uh, you know, you were, you could have bought a five hundred thousand euro house. Maybe you're only looking at four fifty today. But yeah, the bank essentially needed my management company to do this whole portfolio on me and everything. But this is both times. Um, And the second time when I was successful, they had to do this whole thing about like all my work and then a big breakdown with like, you know, there was pie charts and bar charts and everything. It was so, I I felt like kind of like bowing down to like, please, please. (laughs) Because, uh, you know, it's this, everyone says it, but when you're, when your mortgage repayment would typically be the same or less than your rent. And when you're paying that and you've had consistent income for a long time, it's very frustrating um, when, when they're just not giving people that like leg in. Um, and I get it. I get that they have to be, you know, overly cautious about like getting their, their money back and stuff like that. But the way the situation is, it's just so challenging. Um, and to be, for me, like I was 30, was I 32 buying my first house? Like, you know, where you're 15, you never think you're going to be that age before you can own a home. So like, yeah, it's just No, you're absolutely right. And, and for a long time, people thought it was frustrating. Look, I can, I can, I'm paying more in rent than I would be paying for my mortgage. Why won't you give me the, the mortgage? Uh, and yes. the banks always did a stress test where I think they times what the repayment would be by 1.3 to see if interest rates went up, could you still afford it? And for for the last few years, everyone's like, ah, that'll that'll never happen. Uh, and it's mm-hmm. a frustrating thing that's only stopping me getting a, a bigger house or, or more more of a mortgage. But look now how quickly mm. things can change and, and two or three yeah. percent can quickly uh, happen in the matter of months. And those people mm. who you know have been stress tested, at least they should be able to continue their repayments. If it wasn't for that, you know, people would be very mm. quickly unable to keep up with their mortgage payments. So it is good news, yes. I guess, that the banks are being financial prudent, but it is so frustrating for a lot of people, especially yourselves. Yeah. Now, the other thing I also understand you ran into was due to uh, COVID, your husband uh, had problems, although he's gamefully employed, um, his career. Tell me about what happened with him. So this was really funny. When we first went to speak to a mortgage broker, like it was about 
maybe six months before COVID hit or more, um, they were very much like, Thomas, you know, you're a pilot, you're a sure vet, you, this is a great, you know, th- th- no problem, absolutely no problem. Melanie, on the other hand, uh. Uh, like, you know, so so with the two of you together, should be fine, should be grand. And then after COVID, it was flipped because they saw me then as, you know, oh, you work, you can work online. Yeah. So that's, that's a... Uh, that's COVID proof. That's recession proof. That's great. Brilliant. When, of course we'll get your mortgage. And then they were like, oh, you're a pilot. Oh, no. Yes. Yeah, so it was really. <laughs> yeah. I bet you secretly so enjoyed that a little bit. <laughs> oh, no. I was mean, actually, I just felt so bad for him, I think, because it was obviously a big um, thing that attracted him to that job is that it's a secure, stable job that you're not, you know, you get in and you're like, right, at least this is my career now. Mm. And I think it really shook him that so soon after he got that job that he worked for so many years and racked up so much student debt for that then it was like, oh, your whole career could be gone in a month or maybe in a few months or maybe not. And it was just this awful situation. So basically, um, as a lot of people probably know, like uh, employees within airlines, a lot of them were put on like 60% wages mm. type thing during COVID. So he had to, and he ended up um, kind of putting himself forward for this position that came up flying long haul out of Manchester uh, in, as a way to get back to his full income so that the bank would take him seriously right. and take us seriously and give us a mortgage. If he hadn't have done that, there's no way we would have been able to buy a house. But it's been very difficult it's because it means... Yeah, he's, I imagine. Yeah. I, it's like four days out of the week, yeah. like I'd be without him and with a toddler. And when I'm trying to work, it's really hard. I never wanted that either. Like even when we were dating, I remember, because I knew him years before this. And um, we were dating like before he'd gone to do his pilot training. And like he was talking about it and all. And I was kind of like, you know, like would you, you wouldn't be like it. And doing the long haul thing. And I was like, oh no, like I wouldn't be, be interested in that. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like they just say you're you're flying grand or even the odd long haul I wouldn't mind. But um anyway, yeah, that, that ended up being quite a big uh issue for us and we, we very could have been look very possibly could have been looking at still living at home with his parents for a few years if he hadn't have had that opportunity to switch um to Manchester because I think it's only recently a lot of the pilots got back to their hundred percent pay. It very recently. Um, and that's how long after COVID started like, yeah. you know, yeah. some people could push, had, it had their lives pushed back for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, so yeah, between the, between the COVID and then me being self-employed, it was definitely like a, a, a bit of a difficult situation. But I think in the end, the fact that we found the house quite quickly made up for it so it was like oh so, we're getting thrown a ball so that, <laughs> it's fine exactly yeah it all swings around about you know karma comes back around to you so let's talk about that so you got you got sale, you got mortgage approved sort of but this time last mm. year or just before uh and then when did you start looking what were you looking for in a house how did you make your decisions about that so we we kind of um we were fairly open to the type of house like at the time our main thing was that we really wanted to live near all our family friends and they're all based in scaries mm. And this was a big issue because Scaries has become very expensive yes. to live in. And um, we immediately, like, that was kind of where we were looking. But we quickly realized there was no hope in hell that we would find a house that we would be happy in forever. Mm. Um, and when I say forever, I know that you don't have to buy your forever house as your first house, he- like the first time you're buying a house. I know that. And a lot of people don't do that. But my fear has always been that we would get stuck in that house because it's happened to many family members yes. of mine, like even very close family members bought property during say a boom or whatever that they've not ever been able to sell and they've been completely shackled to. So I I just really didn't want to buy um, like a house that we, because we probably could have bought maybe an apartment there um, but, you know, obviously we, we want more. We're, I'm having a second child now that we, we would ideally love to have three kids and then having my dad living with us. So um, it was just important that we had like enough space, at least four bedrooms. Um, because I'm also future, like thinking of the future, like our children will probably be living with us till they're 30 at least. <laughs> well, that's, and let's hope not. That. But yeah, 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 it <laughs> does know, happen. Yeah. Hopefully things improve, but just the way things are 
currently, like where people still live in that home, I always wanted to be able to have enough space for like my children and stuff like that. So uh, we Im- immediately were looking then at towns around Scary. So we were looking as far as like Rush, we were looking at Lusk, we were looking at Null, we were looking at Balbriggan. And we ended up finding a, a house kind of on the outskirts of Balbriggan. Um, and so it's within a 15 minute drive of all of our family and friends, but it was like perfect. It was like literally perfect for what we wanted. Um, it did need a lot more work than I think initially, but I thought, oh, it'd be much easier to move in somewhere that kind of, you can move in. You don't have to worry about course, doing yeah. much renovation work. But it, that idea also did really excite me. And I do prefer the look of older houses because they're, they're very unique and interesting. Like you can get so much character in an older house and then a lot of the newer houses look the same. Yes, but then the pros with them is that they're much warmer. <laughs> and now look at like the heating situation that we're having. So <sighs> like there's pros and cons to new builds and to older houses. But um, we just said like, look, you know, if we're going to live here forever, like we don't have to do everything at once. We can tip away at it over a long period of time. That's it. That, those are the, sort of the few trade-offs. It's you know, new or old, or do I buy something exactly where I want to be? Or can I push out and get a bit better value for money if I just go into sort of a surrounding town or, or countryside? And it, you know, it shows we did the same. We could have bought, um, you know, we had a baby on the way when we first bought a bit like you. Uh, and we could have bought a two bed apartment or maybe a small three bed house where we were in South Dublin. Uh, in fact, and then we, yeah. we, we went 45 minutes South and we could get a, a five bed house uh, for the same price. Wow. It's just extraordinary. And again, yeah. a lot more people are buying that house as the future house. Their first time buy is actually a lot of a larger home than it would have been 10 or 15 years ago where people thought, look, yeah. get on the ladder, get an apartment, and then you can trade up and get something bigger. Because just even in, in yeah. a boom market or a, or a bust market, um, it's been incredibly hard for people to trade up. They haven't been able to sell yes. where they are and, and, and move on up the ladder. Either things have got too expensive yeah. or, or things have been falling. So um, a lot more people yeah. doing as you and I did uh, and just go, go for the, f- the future family home. Go for uh, the end. And even if yeah. it's in a bad state, you can you can work on it. And you're quite good. You're doing a lot of work now, I see. Uh, and it, it's always good content as well. Yeah. Uh, I think you're in the, one of the rooms you recently did a video on. You transformed I am. This, I'm very, uh, I'm very proud it's of stunning. this room. Yeah. I love it. Absolutely <laughs> love it. Like this, this room, the whole house now. And it's not even just that, like, we decorated it so, so like, in, in in a such a pretty way that I love, but it was more so just the actually improving the place with the filming and the electrics and the new window and all that stuff. It's all the boring stuff, obviously, that like isn't that interest content wise online. <laughs> but that's the stuff that like I feel I think that's what really um you know if, I don't know, I suppose affected my expectations with the way people present content online to do with um doing up the house is usually very much appearances like it's aesthetic and it's not um actually future proof in the house in any way or like you know and uh, improving the the insulation and those kinds of things so um i wanted to make a big point of that like that's why we're going so slow is that we have to do that as well um and it's not just a kick because so many people have been like why didn't you do this first or that first or like why didn't you move in and immediately change this or, or change the floors or change the paints and I'm like, because we're going to be drilling into the walls yeah. and, and having to pull the floor up and down and up and down to fix the plumbing. And so That's there were right, certain yeah. things we had to put on the long finger. And um, and yeah, but it's really satisfying and it's it's really nice to see things slowly take shape. That's, that's um, it. That, I think that there's something to be said for that. Back, you know, back in the day, you know, our, our parents' generation, perhaps they'd buy a, a house and they'd do it up slowly, piece by piece. Now, and recently, I think people yeah. have been in a big rush. They'll get the big house and then they'll go get another big loan and the builder will come in and spend nine months doing the place up completely before someone's yeah. even spent a night there. And I find, look, it's actually nice yeah. to live in the house, find out how you move around it, find where the sun comes in, where you like to sit. And yes. then you learn, oh, this is actually my favorite room. And, you know, we've completely changed how we've, we've, um, we've laid out our house in the last eight years and what rooms we like to use and which ones we sit in in the evening so it does it takes a bit of time mm-hmm. to sort of get your feel for a house uh, and rather than just having someone come yeah. in and do it up all at once uh, it's nice to just uh, that's take something time. yeah that's something that my husband said to me before we moved in he was like even though the house is kind of um no they they did keep it they they put a lot of money and time and love into the house because it was 50 years old and it, it could have been in so such a worse condition than it was 
it's more, it was more so just like certain things hadn't been updated in a long time. And then especially the decor obviously is like a different, totally different generation. So, so even though the house was kind of not in the way that we wanted it to be in, um, he was like, I'd much rather live in it and, and get a feel for it first, because we might think that this thing is really important, but then realize, oh, actually like, and he was so right within a, about two months, we had six leaks. <laughs> So like, you know, and we had to do a whole, get the roofers in and there were loads of things cropped up that were not in our budget that ended up taking a lot of money out of our budget. So, um, yeah, it's definitely, and it's, it's the kind of thing as well where I wouldn't want to get a loan out to do this. So we're kind of just trying to constantly be saving toward it. And we had like a, a like house renovation pot and we just add to it and then we use it as we go. It seems the savings doesn't stop when you get get the house. You keep having to continue because there's always something else. There's always, as you say, a roof or a boiler goes or there's a room you want to renovate next year. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. No, but you're absolutely right. To to do the the outside structure and to do all those hidden things, like no one sees that, you know, you can put 50 grand of insulation and all those sort of works into a house and it's not really looking different on the outside. But especially coming into the, the winter that we're probably coming into now, now. isn't it great to have you know have those yeah. things done and make sure that the house is watertight and oh, cozy hopefully as well my husband and I it's just become like a joke already so we got in a um zoned heating right. so that there's thermostat and we can turn off the heat at this end of the house or this end of the house but we have it kind of constantly set to about 15 and anytime he's like you know down the other end, there's I'll just shaking, turn it up to 18, and then he'll walk down and he'll be like, he'll turn it back down 15, and he'll be like, put on the coal. He's <laughs> like me, then, yeah. Oh, that's the same in our house. I think yeah. we're all 17 at the moment there. And uh, they keep <laughs> yeah. saying in the newspaper, oh, turn your thermostat down from 21 to 20. And they like, I'm a long way past that already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was one of was our electrician was like, I think 20 is like, you know, the comfortable. Uh, temperature you know and and, and uh, Thomas was like well no in this house it's a 15 <laughs> put a jumper on yeah <laughs> and that's it yeah <laughs> but um I don't know it is it it brilliant and it's I do feel so very so every day I think because because I first started the process of like I wanted to buy a house obviously like much younger but I wasn't in a position to and I think over the years just spending so much on rent and then being in a position as well where it, the the landlord can need the house back and you can't kind of do as much to it and stuff like that. Like there, I I think renting for a certain point in my life was really, it was important because I didn't know where I wanted to live and, you know, that kind of a thing. But then I, when I got to a point where I was like, I really do want to buy a house and I realized like it might be a lot harder for me than it would have if I'd pursued a traditional Mm -hmm. career path. And it's funny, you know, in college they were all, you know, entrepreneurship, build your own, create your own jobs. And, but it really do, it can put you at a disadvantage and stuff. And I suppose that we, we were very, very lucky in many ways. And it just makes you just not want to take a moment of it for granted, even though it was a long wait overall. Like it was when I first went to the bank for my first mortgage, I was 27 or 28. And then I was like in my early 30s getting my first house. But I just, every day I'm so, I just feel so, so grateful for it. And um, and I do still have that in my head. I'm like, it's not really my house; it's the bank's house. Uh, can't <laughs> but, think of that. Yeah, like every you time know, you put your exactly. stamp on a different room, you know, I think you you, you come to, to think it's making more me yours, feel more yeah. old. Yeah. And uh, yes, I think, last yes. point, you know, I think especially most most I see most first time buyers come along, and uh, normally when one of the, the wife is heavily pregnant or there's a little newborn baby in arms, it seems to be the catalyst for most people to go out. And we were the same. We moved into our house the, mm. the day after my first daughter was born. Uh, it seems to be the catalyst that we've got to get a house because we want a stable roof over our heads we want a a, a sense of place you want to provide Uh, yeah yeah and now how how does it feel now you with your second on the way uh to have that roof over your head and and you're really sort of making a nest now yeah it's it is it's amazing like i think that was definitely it for us we were like we need to have our own home like we don't we, we want to be you just flip into this parent mode and then you realize like uh, my parents can't be responsible for my child, you know, and you, you just get that feeling of yearning for your own nest and your own, um, and it's, it is, it's lovely. I'm just like looking around the house, thinking about all the different memories we're going to make here and, you know, having like a little wall where you can measure their height as they get older and stuff like that. It's lovely. Um, and 
yeah, no, now the second will come and like even just having workmen in the house has made me like so stressed because I have that nesting instinct. I just want to be like my, it's, it's a real it really animal is, feeling yeah. that comes over you. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just, um, it's a, it's, it's so worth it. Like it, it's so worth the stress of the wait. The whole mortgage process is one of the most stressful things we ever experienced ever. And it's, it's been brilliant. brilliant. No, well, I appreciate you so much coming on today. I think that's been a great chat for my audience there. Um, and people can find you online. I think you're, you're on Instagram as Melanie Murphy with, with two eyes in Melanie. Yes. And they'll find your YouTube channel if yeah. they search for you as well. Well, thanks to Melanie for having me on. Find your new home with Church's Estate Agents. Now in Rohini. Our expert valuation team can help you find, rent, or sell your property as fast as you need. With our help, you'll find the best places and the most popular neighbourhoods on the north side. With Churches, you have all the support from the same senior agent throughout the lifetime of your sale. We have a licensed and highly qualified team that brings you trust and safety during the process. It is fast and easy to get your property on the market. Churches provide everything you need to professionally present at your home. An exclusive platform with several media partners that improve our online reach. We do not charge you anything until your property is sold. We are proud of every house, apartment, site or land we sell. Are you waiting to start a new story in a new place? Talk to our team and live the best moment of your life. Churches, giving you more than a house, giving you your home. So this week for In, Out and Away, we've done something a little bit different. I put it to a vote on my Instagram of where we should go this week. We've done Dublin and we've done Galway and we've done Cork. And the public has spoken and said, why don't we go to Midlands? And someone suggested Tullamore. So I thought, uh, I don't know Tullamore at all. I'll call up my good friend at Mark Charles Properties there. This is Mark Conroy. Mark, how are you? Good, Ben. How's things? Great. Yeah, very good. Very good. So you are, you're in downtown uh, Tullamore there. Uh, I wanted to pick your brains and some of your properties and let's have a look and see what we can afford uh, in, in the area. What's Tullamore like? Yeah, Tullamore is doing really well, Ben. I suppose it's like the, the rest of the country. The last 18 months have been very strong for it. Um, good industry down here as well. It's close to Dublin. We've down six motorways, sort of leads us straight up. So yeah, it's, it's doing really well, yeah. And are you finding a lot of people in it since COVID sort of started moving back home, moved out of Dublin, they could they could work from home and that saw people coming back to you guys? Absolutely. That's been huge for us. Yeah, it's really given the whole Midlands a good boost. I suppose a lot of people would have been working in the like of Intel and working up in Dublin, Facebook and Google and probably had to maybe commute up every day or were, were living mm. up there. Now they're able to do maybe one or two days from home or go up one or two days. So that's been huge for us. Yeah, smaller rural towns rural communities have really benefited from that and it's great to see there's just it's, it's thriving again you know brilliant great well okay let's get started let's see what we can buy in and tell them more in out and away so starting out this is eight chancery park downs uh, tell me about this yeah so eight chancery park downs is a three bedroom mid terrace property that we have there uh, Chancery Park would be a very popular estate. It's very close to all amenities in Tullamore, walking distance to Tesco's, Aldi, um, into the shops and pubs and stuff like that. Lovely property. What I like about this one in particular, it has an extra large back garden to it, which you wouldn't normally get, I suppose, with a three-bed semi or mid-terrace. Um, so, yeah, that's a really nice property. We have a price to 210 and a nice bit of interest in it. Yeah, it's a fantastic garden. Yeah, lovely. All right, so that's our in property for today. For our out property today, we have this 53 Arden Vale. This is just on the outskirts, is it? So this is just on the outskirts, Ben. Yeah, 53 Arden Vale, a four-bedroom detached property. And Vale Estate would be very popular, especially from for local people would know it quite well. It's nice and mature now at this stage, so properties don't come up that often in it. And when they do, they're very popular and they're snapped up quite quick. What I like about this one as well there's a garage sort of, it's not it's not attached to it, but it's very close to it. And I had said to people that a little link corridor could be a lovely thing to do from the dining area. 
and you could have maybe a nice um, utility area stroke sitting room it's a really good size and still even have a bit of a garage space in it so that's quite a good one a good size garden to it as well and plenty of park and off street parking too so and that's on the market for 289 that's on the market for 289 another strong point with it too would be that it's it's walking distance to tullamore hospital so for doctors and nurses there uh, again very handy for them doing late shifts and stuff like that they could easily walk from there to the hospital great okay all right yeah. and then finally for our away getting out of the town itself you've given me this uh gal ross gal ross that's a fabulous property it's a B1 on an energy rating, which is very strong. Uh, geothermal underfloor heating. It's set on just shy of three acres. So anybody maybe wanted to keep a horse or a pony or anything like that, <laughs> you can see there is great, great size to it. Um, 2,200 square foot, lovely long driveway. So real substantial property. Probably talking about 20 minutes away from Tullamore. You're quite close to the town of Forban. You're quite close to Atlone there as well. Um, each of those are probably 20 minutes away from it too so you got the best of both worlds with that property um even room for a pool table as you can see in it there as well so, <laughs> it's huge geothermal yeah, yeah, underfloor heating place. lovely 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 snug warm house which as you know everybody's looking for these days so uh, yeah yeah that's that's quite a nice property there you know yeah that's brilliant and a fantastic value for money you're only 20 yeah. minutes from the town center you know you're barely even that far out in the sticks absolutely and again i suppose as your point earlier on Anybody that would have been maybe living in Dublin originally from that area, they can now come down and meet back up with friends and family. And if they can maybe do one or two days in Dublin, they have the best of both worlds now. So as you rightly know, I suppose you'd buy very little for 329000 in, in your was, part of the world. I was going to say, you better get a one bed apartment in the suburbs of, of Stepaside or something like that for that price. Yeah. And you can get a, what's this, a four bed house so. on three acres. Fab- and only what, an hour and, an hour and a bit from Dublin? Uh, Gal Ross, yeah, probably you'd hit it in an hour, an hour and five minutes, yeah. <laughs> Bang on. Brilliant. Well, that's our in, out, and away for this week. Uh, tell us, uh, I'll post this on our social media, and you can tell us which one you would choose if you could, uh, if you could afford to live out in, uh, in uh, Tullamore. Thanks to Mark Conroy there for coming on to talk about the Midlands. Now on to new home versus old home, and I put it to the vote again, or we've given you the choice. We've already done some of Dublin, Cork, and Galway. Uh, and the votes came through this week for new home, old home, is to look at Wexford. Wexford's a really popular county at the moment. It's commutable from Dublin, but has some fantastic scenery and some lovely little towns and really nice housing stock. However, when I went to find new homes in Wexford, I could only find one, uh, one scheme in Enniscorthy. Uh, so we're going to start with that today. This is Old Forge Road, uh, just on the outskirts of Enniscorthy town, which is a lovely old town on the river. It needs some reinvigoration of its high street, but I think it's up and coming. And it's now just over an hour from Dublin with the motorway and very convenient to get into Wexford Town as well. This scheme of new A-rated houses prizes itself on its technology and energy efficiency. Priced at 275 for a three bed and 290 for a four bed, these are super affordable. Each includes high speed broadband, Google smart home systems, high quality fitted kitchens and utility rooms, uh, PV solar panels on the roof, and they are an A2 near zero energy building. It means they're super efficient to run. So that's actually really affordable for a brand new three or four bed home for under 300,000 euros. Uh, if you can work out of the city, if you can get out of Dublin and move down that way, it is a nice lifestyle and this would be an easy home to afford and to heat. Now, for our old home this week, I am one that likes some contrast, and I couldn't get uh, greater contrast here. This is 9 Castle Street in Enniscorthy, uh, in the town centre. This is a four-storey Georgian building with a shop on the ground floor. It extends to almost 3,000 square feet and essentially has six bedrooms in it. Uh, I love this. This could be a beautiful restoration. We're seeing more and more commercial buildings being restored. You could probably get the 50,000 euro government grant to help you reinstate this property. Uh, if you like to be in the center of a town, uh, you don't mind being over three or four floors, uh, you could really turn this into a very interesting uh, property, whether you keep the commercial and live above it or you uh, convert the whole thing into a fabulous city center home. It could be really cool. So uh, that is on the market at 279. You probably need to spend that again uh, to uh, to refurbish it, or you could do it with uh, elbow grease and hard work. But look, that's a contrast there. Enniscorthy has some very, very affordable property in the town centre. A lot of it is tired and a little old, but you know, if you got in there and you're willing to uh, find a doer-upper, 
and maybe take advantage of some of those grants, you could find a real gem that you could restore into something beautiful. So there's our new home versus old home this week. Tell me in the comments on social media which one you would choose. And now finally, it's time for this week's news. There's a mixture of good and bad news this week. I start with this article from theindependent.ie. Mortgage lender hikes variable and fixed rates by up to 2%. This is news that Finance Island have increased the rate of their fixed mortgage from 3.75% to 5.75% for a 20-year term. This is obviously a reaction to the increased ECB interest rate, but also expected future increases from them and other central banks. For a first-time buyer with a 90% mortgage, this could be up to €300 Euros more expenses each month or €3,600 in the year. Obviously, if it's getting more expensive to borrow, it's going to decrease your purchasing power and that could see an effect on house prices. In some good news, yesterday Fianna Fáil voted to expand the first-time buyer shared home equity scheme to self-builds. The scheme introduced in July was originally just for new build developer built homes. They also voted that the €50,000 grant to refurbish and regenerate der derelict homes uh, in rural communities will be expanded into the cities as well, so you could use them anywhere to bring a derelict house back to life. Next, I share this article from the Irish Examiner. Back to the future, how Ireland's 1980s bungalow is making a comeback. I love bungalows. Some people won't go near them, but they actually are fantastic properties. There are thousands of these 1980s bungalows around the country made famous by Bungalow Bliss. These very simple plans that people could build anywhere and often build themselves. They were very basic. Uh, they wouldn't have any modern plan to them. But every week I'm seeing more and more people taking these homes and refurbishing them in clever ways, expanding the ground floor and even doing clever things with the upstairs as well. You find these bungalows all across the country. They're not in rural locations. I have estates full of them in Black Rock, Lockman's Town, Cherrywood, all these sort of areas in town. They're great properties. You shouldn't overlook them if you're looking for a house. They can make fabulous spaces. Finally, myhome.ie have released their quarterly report and it's showing that Ireland's house price inflation has certainly slowed. They're expecting prices to only increase in 2022 of 6% and possibly up only 3% in 2023. It's good news, I think, that the house price inflation has slowed a bit from the breakneck pace it was going in the last two years. It also shows there are 25% more properties on the market available to buy, which is great for buyers for choice, and it won't see such frenetic bidding when there was such a lack of stock in the early part of this year and before. I'll include a link to that report in the show notes. And also, next week, I'm hoping to interview Joanne Geary, the managing director of My Home, to talk about the latest moves in the market and how My Home are working hard to help you find your perfect property. Thanks for tuning in to episode five of the Irish Home Show. Next week, we're gonna to continue to talk about house hunting and I'm gonna talk you through how to approach house viewings to get the best out of your time and how to talk to estate agents so that you are front of the line when you find the house of your dreams. Please subscribe to the Irish Home Show if you aren't already and follow us on Instagram at Irish Home Magazine. See you next week.